Let me get your close up real quick and I'll get out of the way. Do I look familiar? I'm one of your friends from uh, yeah, the so Pearl Harbor uh, Chapter 5 in Concord. <laughs> it's so good to see you. I remember you. being there. You betcha. Thank you. It's not Don, is it? Well, yeah, I'm Don. And uh, Tammy brought, did Tammy come? Yeah, Tammy's here. Tammy's here. Have a great day. Thank you. They can't wait to hear from you. All right, aloha folks. We're going to go ahead and get started. Um, again, thank you all so much for being here. My name is Emily Pruitt. I'm a park ranger here at Pearl Harbor National Memorial. I thank you to our wonderful World War II veterans and our Rosies for being here with us. I'm going to ask uh, our veterans a series of questions and, and we'll give them the chance to answer. Um, sir, do you mind introducing yourself and giving us your name and then where you were on December 7th and how old you are today? Um, my name is Herbert L. Fring, and I was 19, um, 80 years ago, at a army camp called Camp Malancholy, just on the shoreline toward Pearl, uh, Barber Point from Pearl Harbor. Uh, what else? How old are you today? <laughs> I am 99 and a half. 99 and a half. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being here with us today. All right, ma'am, can I ask you the same questions? Your name? If I can remember all of them. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Marion Nguyen. And where were you on December 7th, 1941? I was at home, and I was 14 years old when the war broke out. How old are you today? I'm sorry, I have to ask. 95. 95. 95. Wonderful, thank you so much. And now your turn, ma'am. Hi, Meg. My name is Meg Pryor. I'll be 76 shortly. I work at Boeing. I built B-17s and B-29s. And the morning that Pearl Harbor was bombed, my sister and I had been to a matinee. And we came home and our folks were sitting there so upset and we wondered what had happened. They said, Japan had bombed Pearl Harbor. And you know, I was a teenager and I looked and said, I don't know it. I know where Pearl Harbor is. I found out today, didn't I? You did. Yep. How old are you today? Oh, what is it? I have to ask you how old you are. I'm so sorry. 76 in March. Or 96. <laughs> well, you look 76. She's 95. <laughs> You're 96. Are you sure? Almost. I'm like him. Okay. Great. <laughs> Sir, hello. How are you? Good. Can we get your name, please? Robert Potter. Robert Potter. And where were you on December 7th, 1941? I was in an apartment listening to, I believe it was Notre Dame and Southern Cal on the radio. That's wonderful. And what branch of service did you join afterwards? Marine Corps. And how old are you today? Well, I was 95 to, and I was 16 when I was in Guadalcanal. Wonderful. Well, thank you. You lied about your age? I went home and signature. Oh. Did they know what they were signing? Huh? Yeah. Yeah, they did. Well, thank you so much for being here with us today. Hi, sir. It's your turn. <laughs> My name is Ed. What's your name, sir? Barton. Pardon? Can you repeat your name, sir? I, I was 16-year-old apprentice in the shipyard when we heard the radio say, there's an attack from the upper band, and it's not an exercise, it's a real thing. All shipyard workers get to the shipyard, try to save the wounded men, and uh, help with saving the ships. So I grabbed my wheelies and, and uh, headed for the shipyard. Lucky I did not take that Mimmons Highway because the machine gunning 
the cars there, they were all trapped. Nowhere else to go but in the sugarcane fields. So I was on Nimbus Highway so I can zigzag to get away from the boats. And uh, I got to the shipyard. They said, take your car to the housing area, find a place to park. So that's what I did. Kept my car out of the shipyard. And uh, we got on a truck. The Lolo was going zigzag and the sides of the truck broke away. We went spilling over the road and uh, I helped put the pieces of the truck back up, but I wasn't going back on the truck. I don't blame you. How old are you today, sir? Pardon? How old are you today? I'm only 94. Wonderful. Thank you so much for being here with us today. We really appreciate it. We're going to have a few more questions, and I'll go down the line and give everybody a chance to answer them. Um, our first question is, what inspired you to travel all the way to Hawaii to be here for this event? Would you like to answer that, sir? Well, because I've been here numerous times for this same occasion before on December 7th. That is wonderful. Thank you so much for coming back with us. This probably is my tenth time back here, I suppose, something like that. We should get you a punch card. Yes. <laughs> what about you, ma'am? What was what inspired you to to come back and be here with us today? I've always wanted to come back. I was here for the seventy fifth, and I always wanted to come back, but I knew I'd never make it because of my age, and I don't have that kind of money. But we have a woman that works with us and she asked me one day would you like to go back to Pearl Harbor and I said of course so here we are wonderful thank you so much what about you what what inspired you to come back to Pearl Harbor for the 80th anniversary it took so long for them to honor Rosie and what we did for the world and along with the men and we fought together as far as I'm concerned but it took so long for them to wonder what us women did. And so, of course, I've been fighting hard for that to get our recognition. But it was so nice, they finally started to honor us. We've got our Congressional Gold Medal. We've, got, we've been honored in the, at the Normandy a couple of years ago. And now we're here with Pearl Harbor being honored again. And we love it. We love what you, everybody did. We love what you're still doing. And I love what the women are doing. And we have a national park, Rosie the Riveter Homefront National Historic Site, no, right? I live in Philadelphia. Live in Philadelphia. Yeah, yeah, in Philadelphia. Yeah. But I did my work in Boeing in Seattle. Oh wow. I met this cute sailor on the dance floor. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, what inspired you to travel all the way to Hawaii for the 80th commemoration? Well, I I went to uh, Guadalcanal on the 60th anniversary. And I just want to share what's happening here. I, I, I praise all the people at World War II and those who put putting on this program for us. And thank you. Well, it's our pleasure. Thank you, sir, for what you did. We really appreciate it. What inspired you to come back? Do you live in Hawaii, sir? Do you still live in Hawaii? Yeah. What inspired you to come to Pearl Harbor for the 80th anniversary? I was born here, and I was very, uh, my first job was in the shipyard. What part of the island were you born on? Pardon? What part of the island were you born on? Kaibo Key. All right. And, uh, I, I was raised in Kapu'u. And I went to, to school in Hawaii, University of Hawaii, and then I went to mainland college uh, after that. But 
I'm a Hawaiian at heart. My roots are here. And uh, December 7th, I was so mad. I could throw rocks at those airplanes. That's all we could do. We could see the pilots looking down at us and grinning, and there's nothing we could do about it. Uh, I would like to grab one of those guys and out of the plane and give my life as necessary. Well, thank you. So you have a lot of very vivid memories of that day. In the Army, as a staff sergeant in the Signal Corps, and then I went into the Navy worked with Admiral Zumo in building up the Vietnamese Navy, trying to block the Viet Cong from bringing weapons up the seven miles of the dragon. And uh, that's where I terminated in my career. Thank you. from SYNCPAC Fleet, where I was stationed. And uh, Admiral Zubal, I turned over to him my charts and everything, and he presented it to the president. And he says, you are hereby commander in chief of the Navy. Zumbal was very grateful to me. He wanted to take me to Washington. And I says, I'm a barefooted Hawaiian. I belong in Hawaii. I lost nothing in Washington, D.C. I don't want anything to do with Washington. I just want to go back to my Little grass shack in Hawaii. That sounds really wonderful, especially with the winter that they have in DC versus Hawaii's winters, right? It's a lot warmer here. Thank you so much, sir. I'm gonna go back this way. Um, I'm gonna ask you questions from our friends at, um, in our foreign media pool. Um, why do you think the US and Japan were able to build back a really strong relationship after the tragic attack at, World War, at, at Pearl Harbor? I think basically it's because of uh, the attitude of our own country, the United States being friendly and not carrying, carrying a real de deadly grudge, you might say. Yeah. So it was in our best interest to uh, make them a, a, a country that could support themselves as, as well as anything else, so that we would even have to help support them, which we probably did very, very generously for several years, I suppose. I don't know. Thank you. What about you ladies? What do you think um, the U.S. was able, U.S. and Japan were able to build back a strong relationship after the tragic attack here at Pearl Harbor? For me, it's so important to come back and see the Missouri. We spent such a, uh, it was a great day when we watched the surrender and all of the, what took place on the Missouri. And I've never seen it before. I haven't been back here to see it. And to me, that was uh, monumental. I would like to come back. <clears throat> I had a friend that had a brother that went down on the, I thought it was the Arizona, but it turned out that it was on the Oklahoma, so. I just wanted to come back and see everything and how it was and how it is now. I only have one more question. Is that okay with everybody? One more question for you all? Is there a message that you would like to share today with our future generations? Well, I, I'm sorry that it's not 
as tough a battle for them as it is, was for me in, in my young teenage years. I, I think uh, kids today are to have taken have had it so easy and taken so much for granted that uh, they don't have a, a real chance to look back at our country and see what it's, what it has uh, done to support uh, everyone you know that's had a chance to improve themselves and uh, my my I thought it would be to try to instill on and get to appreciate the United States and do it, do what they can to make their the improvements necessary to make it better. Wonderful, thank you. What about you, ladies? Is there a message that you would like to share with the future generations of this country? I would like to tell the girls that if they get a chance to do men's work, to do it. They can do it. Uh, yeah, I used to say, I, I didn't know how to do that, but I was a pipe welder. I was 18 years old. I came from Minnesota, and I babysat and took care of people that were sick for maybe $2 an hour. And I came out here and got a man's job, pipe welding. I went to school for two weeks and learned to weld. I would never have thought I could do that that I did. So I always tell them, don't say you can't do it unless you try it. You can do it. I love that. Thank you. I'm very strong on women's rights. I think what this, I'm sorry, but what happened with the, the war and all, it's so great that the women have uh, produced like the men during World War II. The sad part is we worked side by side with men, but we didn't get paid the same amount of money. Now I'm strong on that. I, I really preach and I travel. To get equal pay, is, it, it's equal rights. I think it's very important. And I really work to get equal rights for women and young girls, especially young girls. I mean, I did get the same wage that the men did. And I don't know why we can't do it today. And we didn't get the same wage, but uh, we did the same job. And I always thought it wasn't fair. And about 40 years ago, I started writing. I said, the, American women should be recognized for what they did. And they never gave up. And just recently we got the Congressional Gold Medal and you can't imagine how excited and thrilled I was over it. You just gotta stick in there and be persistent, don't give up. I tell that to young girls in school, I speak a lot with the different organizations. Tell the young girls, don't give up. We all make mistakes, but we learn more from our mistakes. Just keep in there, like science, you know, science week, I thought that was so outstanding because there's so many young girls that don't uh, go into science because they think it's a man's world, it's not anymore. Look at our astronauts and what they're doing. Look what you women are doing, I'm so proud of you. Well, I'd like to say thank you for that. That was incredibly inspiring. Thank you all so much for being here with us today. We really, really appreciate it. Um, again, um, please, do let us know if you have any other questions for the park about December 7th related events. And if we have family members that are here to grab our wonderful veterans, we are ready to do that. So can we give them a round of applause, please? Dorinda Nicholson here with us. So Dorinda, would you mind spelling your name out for everybody? Uh, Dorinda, D-O-R-I-N-D-A, and my middle name is Makana O Nalani. Makana means gift, so M-A-K-A-O-N-A-L-A-N-I of the heavens. And my married name is Nicholson. Dorinda, how old were you on December 7th, 1941? I was six years old living on the Pearl City Peninsula. And were your parents in the military? No. No, the whole Pearl City Peninsula was local people. Um, 
my mother's Hawaiian, our neighbors were Portuguese, uh, Filipino, Japanese, and we were uh, the people of uh, Hawaii, the locals. And you know, the, uh, Pan American World Airways was based there. And so mom went to work there and could walk to work. And so uh, the military just kind of built around us civilians. It really did. What do you remember most about December 7th, 1941? Oh gosh, it's hard to pick a most. Um, certainly the beginning with my mom getting breakfast and airplanes starting to come over and dad saying what so many of the men, even the men looking at the airplanes, how strange the Army and Navy don't usually practice or do maneuvers on, uh, on a Sunday morning. And then there was explosions and uh, you know, the Formica table was shaking. And so Dad ran out into the front yard and I was right with him. And just barely above the trees and above the house tops, uh, I now know were torpedo bomber certainly did as a six-year-old and the, their canopies were pushed back and you could you could see the pilots and you could see their goggles so that that was the beginning of Sunday December the 7th for our little family and that's how you you learned of the attack it wasn't by the radio or anything like no. that but I you know I'd love to know what my 25 year old father was thinking and uh, he didn't say anything except drug me back in the house, got baby brother out of his crib, put mom and dad in the car, and from the end of the peninsula all the way up to Kamehameha Highway is Lehua Avenue. And then if you just keep going, there are sugarcane fields all up in there. And that's where we hid. So you actually had to evacuate your home on December 7th for safety? Well, we didn't know we were evacuating. We were just trying to get away. And I fully believed we were going back home. We didn't, we didn't take anything with me. And so for a six-year-old, what I remember is I didn't get to take my dog. If I had known that we were going to be gone as long. And then as um, the day goes on and Dad's turning the car radio and what we get is Webley Edwards saying, this is the real McCoy. And medical get to the nearest hospital to treat the wounded and the injured. All military report to your bases. Everyone else, stay in your house. No telephone. And nothing about who it was, how many are killed, you know, what what is happening. How long were you out of your house for? We actually were out of our house for almost a week. But that day, uh, Redley Edwards comes on again and you know makes the same announcement. But then later in the afternoon, like about two or three o'clock, the governor comes on the air. And Governor Poindexter says, that there's been communication with President Roosevelt and Hawaii is now under martial law. And again, may not leave your house, you may not drive, uh, you may not leave your house when it's dark after dark, and you, have, you can't even turn on your lights, complete blackout. So I'm thinking, well, we can go home and not use the phone, but uh, military police came in to uh, the sugarcane fields, and because of where we lived, you know, if we had lived in Waikiki or Honolulu, it would have been different. But because of where we lived, we had uh, unexploded shells and ammunition that needed to be cleared before we could come back to our house. For a six-year-old, I bet that was quite an adventure. <laughs> um, 
Is there a message that you would like to share today with future generations, future six-year-olds and, and older kiddos about, about what we need to remember? Oh gosh, um, that war is not romantic. Uh, war is uh, hurts more than you. When, when there's someone that's gone down on the Arizona, there's a mother and a father and uh, a baby sister or whatever who are mourning. Uh, for them, and that there are different kinds of wars. Um, personally, going through World War II was hard, and there were lots of things we had to do uh, as as people living here and children living here. But it was also hard. My parents were at war with each other. So there's the need to learn resilience and uh, how to get along and to develop peace within yourself so that you can start that with others. Along those lines, do you, how do you think or why do you think that the U.S. and Japan were able to build back such strong relationships after the tragic attack here at Pearl Harbor? I, I'm not a historian or, or a politician, but I just know we are such good friends now. And uh, I have to tell you, when the movie Pearl Harbor came out, I think 20 years ago, that was about the 60th anniversary, and uh, there was a group, I, I now live in the middle of, uh, the United States in the Kansas City area. But whenever you get island people, anywhere you start looking, is there anybody else here from Hawaii? And so we have a Hawaiian club. And one of the members was uh, a young girl from Japan. Well, the Hawaiian club decided to go to, a, to see the movie. And we were all so scared. And afterwards, we asked her, you know, scared, like, and she said, oh, she didn't really know much about it, and because of her age group, uh, that part was, was gone. It was, it takes almost generations. Um, my mother-in-law had a hard time uh, with that, but those of us here in Hawaii in terms of, of island Japanese, they are locals and, but in terms of country-wise, I'm not sure how that happened. I'm just glad that it happened. Because during our time, really remember Pearl Harbor? That meant remember to hate. And now, uh, how wonderful that we are friends because there is a war going on somewhere, always. I think it's important to remember to reconcile as well. Absolutely. And to build within yourself. Absolutely. Dorinda, thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate it. Thank you to you all for joining us today. We really appreciate it. It sounds like the rain is lightening up, so I'm gonna let you guys pack up your very nice camera equipment and we'll get you all escorted out safely. Thank you again very much and have a safe night.